gold hit in 2172 today. I think he's throwing a chart up on the toss it up on the screen. Hi there, David. Hello, Chris and everyone. Yes, great to have you back with us. And uh, hopefully you can see this little weekly chart of the gold futures contract. Um, still treading water here for about, oh, we're starting our third week after that monster breakout. Uh, do you want to start with gold or should I toss silver up on the screen? Oh, this is fine. So what do you want me to do? Speak about the breakout or? Yeah, let's let's talk about, uh, you know, the highest gold and the biggest yawn, or I should say the highest gold price in quite some time and maybe the biggest yawn, uh, yawn on the mainline media. Folks are just, uh, I guess, in love with equities, which keep hitting new highs. Yeah, two things to cover. So number one, this is a weekly chart, which is really good. I like, I look at the daily, but uh, seldom look at the hourly, although I have. Uh, weekly is pretty good as far as, you know, long-term investment is concerned. It sort of, you know, smooths out the curve, so to speak, because you're looking at data week to week. You can even use a monthly, which I do as well. And so from this chart, as you can see, green is, you know, buying pressure moving up and red is selling pressure moving down. So what we see here is we've overcome that looks like 2080 level significantly. Um, <clears throat> there's no volume on this chart, which is important, but not necessary to talk about the breakout. And we had a little bit of a pullback in the red week, as you can see, and that's not much. And then the two weeks after the red week, uh, using candles, we've had uh, another move up and the last one is kind of neutral. So this is very normal for any commodity to, uh, once a breakout has occurred, especially after it's taken some time at whatever level that has become uh, <clears throat> resistance, then become support. I'm talking about, you know, you look at 2080, I would use more like 2000, but regardless, <clears throat> it'll consolidate for a while. So it may consolidate a very strong market just for a short time and then move further up. Uh, my expectations are neutral. I don't know if it's going to consolidate for a short duration or a long duration. I suspect it's going to be a high level consolidation. So we're not going to see um, much below that 2080 level, but we could. And we could get all the way down to the breakout point, which I forget. And look at this chart. I don't have it in my head. I did it for my, my paid members. But regardless, it, every, uh, it's not uncommon for a commodity or even a stock to come back and touch the breakout point. Even if that happens, <clears throat> that's nothing. We're still well above the 2000 level. Round numbers are important. Commodities hardly ever land on a, on a round number, but it's often a psychological number for the market going, in, going forward. So 2000 is going to be locked in all the gold traders' heads that that's basically the floor. That's the worst it's going to do. Could it get under that? Yeah, it could. Do I think it will? No, I don't. I think maybe in the worst of the silver doldrums, we might approach that level. I don't know. I, again, I doubt it. Uh, we've got a strong market that continues to remain strong. And as you said, second topic, you know, it's a big yawn to the main markets. You don't really hear yeah. much. Gold is something that is it's much more establishment than silver, but it is not mainstream from the aspect that you're going to hear anything from you know, CNBC, MSNBC, any of the financial channels, you're not going to hear about gold. I mean, you might hear the gold price, you know, mentioned every hour, along with all the other commodities. They'll mention it as, as often as they mention soybean oil. It's not something that they'll make a big deal until they can, can't ignore it anymore. In other words, <clears throat> when it becomes such a strong market that it's making new high, new high, new high then the financial markets almost have to do it because if they don't, they look like they aren't doing their job. The thing about the new high, which bothers me somewhat, Chris, is that it is a new high numerically. I mean, we know that you know 2,200 is greater than 850, but on an inflation adjusted basis, this level that we're at right now is an inflation adjusted high for gold going back to the year 2003. So in other words, 
a $2,200, $2,300 gold price is equal to eight fifty dollars going back 23 years ago or 20 years ago. So to get to a new high today in, in real terms, in inflation-adjusted terms, you'd have to be about nine times higher than where you are now. Whoa, David Morgan, nine times higher. Um, that's, you know, I have to tell you, that's probably the largest number I've ever heard when it comes to inflation. They typically, don't they run with in the neighborhood of 3X from 1980? But, you know, I'm with you. If we add well, in let, all the let money. Let me interrupt you yeah. for a second because, I, you know, me, my hands being background. <laughs> no, you're good. Idiot, Please. You know, sitting at his desk told me that. I say, oh, come on. And, and I ignore it. So let's do the math. It's yes. It's a problem. It's a division problem. You take M0, which is base money. Can I show my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Please do. Um, How do you probably do need, I need to relinquish mine. Let me try stop sharing. Three, two, confirm stop sharing. And I think you're ready to go, my friend. All right. All right. So if we go to base money supply, the done versus the amount of gold that's constant, that would be the number. And so when I see this 2,500 is all time high or 2,280, whatever the exact number was, I know it was 2,200 something. That is a nominal high. That's a bigger number, but it isn't anything close to an inflation adjusted number. That's my whole point. And my other point is what the inflation adjusted number is so large that most people wouldn't believe it. And that's why I went to the trouble. Thank you for letting me do so to prove to everybody. You know, all I'm doing is taking basically cash money uh, you know, it's really a lot of it's digital, but it's what, what's considered cash. It's what you could write a check against or a debit card against or physical cash in your pocket against. That's that's it. That's the base money supply versus gold. Because gold is a base money. I mean, gold is a physical money. It's not credit. You could use it as collateral to get credit, but it's not. So that's why I use base money. Not everyone agrees with me. I'm very staunch about that position. And don't give up on it at all because of what gold is and what what base money is. That's the only way, in my view, to equate it. Now, if you do a Jim Sinclair and you go back whatever it's been four or five years ago and you use M2, that puts the money at the M you know, gold to the ounces ratio around fifty thousand back then. So now it's God knows it's probably double that. So, but gold does not cover all credit. All, a lot of that credit is just going to evaporate into money heaven. It's going away. You're, you borrowed 5000 from your uncle and you're never paying it back. He loses, you win, it's over. It doesn't come out of nowhere and he doesn't get paid back. So anyway, back on to you, Chris. Give me another one. No, that was that was definitely worth the wait. Um, and I appreciate it. It's a very unique perspective. Um, and I know that our listeners and viewers will appreciate you know, your very, um, very well thought out analysis. And, you know, I think there's another, we kind of started with the technical story here. I, I just drew a little support level for us. You'll remember right. three months. Yeah. That false breakout three months ago that had everyone sure. excited on a Sunday. I'll never forget right. that Sunday night. Um, now it looks like, and I only just drew this silly line right here, but I mean, it, it looks like that breakout level that failed has now become support. Well, I'd love it to see so it. far, and it's already been tested uh, with the third one over. So I forget the name of that candle. I don't have them all memorized anymore. I don't use candles. Oh, the kind of hanging much. man, hanging yeah. man, this one yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot there in these charts. And candles are actually kind of, kind of fun. I didn't start using candles until kind of the end of my trading days. But anyway, back to you. <clears throat> no, no, I agree with you. And, and you know who got me turned back on to it is Alex Gomez. He's this okay. brilliant um, he trend. Uh, yeah, he's, you, you know, Alex, I mean, his stuff. I know all of him. I don't know him personally, but I oh, he's, he's fantastic. I've tried, I'm trying to get him on the show. Um, he, he just, you know, makes more money than he knows what to do with. And his okay. favorite book, David, is the Candlestick Bible you know, by the great um, traders there from the past. And, and you'll, you'll, I know you know the story of the rice trader in Japan who created candlesticks and he dominated. Uh, he, he would have been, you know, like the Warren Buffett of today, if you will. But uh, so, yeah, he, he turned me back onto the candlestick Bible and it's in my library somewhere. And, and there are some really interesting patterns 
you know, it gives us, um, I think, better entries and a better appreciation of the price structure that you've outlined here today. Um, I like what I'm seeing, but, you know, we haven't brought up silver. So let's hop on over to our favorite index here, the silver futures, which hopefully will play catch up. I mean, they had a great three-week rally. So we'll see what's up with silver. Okay, consolidating near the the previous high. And we want to see things take off. And we have been in just, you remember, I'm sure you'll recall in 2010, what a boring period that was just before the 3X from 13 to, well, more than that, uh, more than a 3X, up to nearly 50 in just a few months' time. And we're hoping for something similar this time, David. Correct. Yeah. It was almost about a $9 to f almost 50, so six done so it was about a 500 percent that ball yeah, yeah you're you're referring back here it's kind of hard to say well, 2009 no, no. But yeah 2000 you're right you're right yeah 2009 yeah so it did drop briefly didn't in front you're you're thinking of the nadia here around nine and change uh or even lower yeah. and then we yeah. and of course me i'm looking at the, the consolidation fine. and trying to compare that whole consolidation period uh, we saw something similar here, didn't we? we dropped down to around 13, I recall, or maybe not quite that low. That was back here. It was 12-something. I bought the day before that. <laughs> and it dropped in like another $2. I bought in the spot market. I bought physical. And, of course, you know, no one – I mean, I'd say no one gets the bottom. It's pure luck almost. So I got within one day, but still dropped down. I think it was below 12.50 for that that day, intraday. Anyway, I called my broker back. I said, dang it, I missed it by a, a day. Or I, I missed it. You know, I don't know. It might have been going lower the day after. I didn't know. No one did. And I said, well, how much difference would my buy price be? He said, about 25 cents. So even though it was, you know, two bucks in the futures, it was only a, you know, quarter in the physical market. So I really got pretty much to, the, to that low at that time. Well, fantastic. And, and of course, can... Big kudos for that. And, you know, David, um, this is an extraordinarily bullish inverted head and shoulders pattern here. No guarantees in any market, right? Because price can do whatever it, yeah, whatever it wants. Um, if it were that simple, I guess we'd all uh, have Elon Musk's uh, numbers in our bank account. But um, it does give hints, as we know, and patterns are quite replicable. So there, there is some rhyming, at least, in the uh, data. And I think uh, there's just nothing that indicates that built up momentum much better than an inverted head and shoulders, as we I mentioned before, very similar to that 2010, 2011 period. Do we stop at 50 or do we keep marching this time? Do you think? I'll tell you what I think, you know, this is just yeah. like conjecture. <laughs> what I think is that we'll hit 50 and it'll probably back off. And it might not go to 55, 0.00. It might hit 53, 25. Who knows? But it'll be in the 50 range. It'll probably back off. And there'll be a lot of sells at 50, probably, at least on paper. And then uh, it all could come down and go below 50. And I don't know how much below silver could do in and go to 35. I doubt it. But still goes to 43. Consolidates there. And I don't think it'll consolidate for very long. And then it will come back up to 50. And once 50 becomes a floor for silver, can you bar the door? Because now you're in new territory. You've got an industrial demand that can barely be met by all silver production and recycling. And now you have nothing but fresh buying and people that are holding because they have waited so long. And they are such men and women of conviction that any new buying, which will be massive, will take the price up higher and higher and higher. And the trick will be getting out where you're happy uh, as far as your profit is concerned. And also, what do you do with fiat? Because in that most likely scenario, we'll be further down the road to capital destruction, or I should say currency destruction or a currency crisis. And it will be in the US dollar at that time. It should be, I believe it will be. I'm telling you what I think, not what is inevitable, <clears throat> but this is the most likely scenario in my mind, and I've thought about it, Paul, as much as anyone. So there you no, are. Yeah, you're going I, 75, no. 100, 125 when you, when you step off. Well, 
if you read our book, Second Chance, David Smith and I wrote, you'll, you will filter out, you'll set a goal. Okay, well, I want $200 silver. But before we get to, to 200, we got to get 50 as a floor. So I'm going to sell 20% at 75, another 20% at 90, another 20% at 130, and you know whatever. And then we do what we call the uh, sacrifice fly. And the sacrifice fly, you're sitting on these paper profits and you take some of that into the options market. And just in case it is 250 or 1,000 or 5,000 or pick a ridiculous number and the market is so hot that sacrifice fly will actually cover you uh, with a little risk. So you've made a million, you're gonna bet 2,000 on the sacrifice fly because instead of going to 150, it goes to 250, you're still in the game. <clears throat> Yes, indeed. Sacrifice flight. Well, you know, I think these are all fantastic points. And, you know, David, you've spent decades. My life. Yeah. yeah. You, this is this is the uh, culmination of a tremendous amount of analysis and uh, on your part. And we appreciate that very unique perspective. Um, but, you know, I think this is also an atypical market structure we see here. I mean, we're talking four years of consolidation, at least six years before that. I mean, I, yeah, you could make a case here. It's I'm off. It's really 10 years, David, a 10 year consolidation within a cup and handle. I know that puts some people off, but those of us who watch markets love to see cup and handles. And then there's an enormous cup and handle going back to 19. I mean, this thing, I, it, it just, you know, I guess we've been saying this for years, so maybe that's putting people's feet to sleep. But from my perspective, this is a coiled spring ready to explode. Yeah. A vital. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I actually am concerned about the shorts <laughs> because yeah. they, they're going to get caught. I think flat-footed here, and we're we could see force majeures. If they don't wake up, if people don't wake up to what's getting ready to happen, uh, does it happen this summer or are we going to have to just wait and see for the big breakout? Is it just too hard to predict, do you think? Well, I don't think it'll happen this summer. It is pretty difficult to predict because I have to, you know, beat myself up somewhat because, you know, I mean, I've, I've said on many you know, interviews, um, there's just been so many times I really thought we were there or getting there only to discover that, you know, the markets just keep on keeping on and, and we had to wait longer. In other words, I've predicted this sooner than it's actually happened. I admit that I'm not afraid to admit I'm wrong. Uh, There's a lot of others. I'm in a good camp. And the other part, you know, which I kind of don't need to beat myself up quite as much is, you know, take a look around, you know, well, David, you said this, well, let's look at the facts. Look at how, what the retail market looks like. Look at how many retail retailers there are that are out of business, have gone bankrupt. Look at your corporate restaurants, how many have closed down. Look at your cost of uh, your groceries. So there's a lot of stuff that's here and now and real that people are, you know, looking at in their daily lives. And it more or less proves the fact that um, you know we are entering into a great massive con- uh, co- uh, contraction in the global economy, and that a lot of the stuff that myself and others have forecast actually ha- is has taken place is already in the record book. So, so there's something to it. Um, but as far as exactly. the summer, no, I think by the end of the year, but I don't know for sure. But um, there is another chart I'd like to show if I can sure. get uh, this thing to work properly. Uh, I don't know if I can. I'll stop uh, sharing at this end and let you. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I got it queued up right here. Come on, baby. Comes off of PowerPoint. So I got <laughs> I already found it. I just got to find it on the slide deck and I'm making it. The whole, oh man, did I miss it? There it is. All right, so now let me get back to Skype. 
There it is. Share screen. Oh. Okay, it looks like we're loading. We're loading here. Are you seeing a uh, chart that says silver demand high case? Yeah, we're getting your desktop. Um, what what we need is within this, you'll see a share screen. You have to then go and specifically double click that specific tab. Because we're showing your desktop. So you got to go under the, there's usually like three columns. And one of them will be the tab that pops up. And then you'll kind of click that, double click that. So there'll be a desktop, there'll be a window option. When you would choose screen, if you look at the top heading, it'll say choose screen to share. You want to click under window, the specific window that you want to share, and then click start sharing. Does that is that maybe what you're saying? Yeah, it makes sense. I, I understood what you said. I just don't see it on here. Let me see yeah. share. There it goes. Okay. Too large to be sent, it says. Hmm. Well, oh, because it was trying to share it to the, <clears throat> like, in an email. Well, anyway, here, I'll just read it to you. So this is <clears throat> silver demand high case. It shows in 2024 that all the um, silver mined and recycled this year will be eaten up with a deficit. And um, that's a uh, high, de high demand case. Really, we're about 200 million ounces above that already. Uh, this chart was made about two or three years ago. And so right now, 2024, guesstimating that we have the same demand as last year, we'll have another 200 million ounce deficit. So what I'm saying is industrial demand, jewelry, Silverware is basically eating up all the all the <clears throat> physical silver, and investment demand has to be met by the above ground supply, which is probably two and a half billion ounces, maybe three. I don't know. No one knows for sure. So we're in a structural deficit, basically, as far as the eye can see. Uh, all things being equal, and they're not. They're not. So we want to get too excited, but. I wish I could show you this chart because, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. I did this for my uh, members over the weekend. I actually spent a lot of time on this, explained um, just how bullish the physical demand case is. And hey, Bob. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, David, would you like to uh, email it to me and then I can pull it up on the screen here for you? And I then tried Dave... and it said it was too big a file. Oh, man. Because um, Dave Dave can pull all the dead air out for us. He's our wonderful editor here, um, and so you you don't think you could? Let's see, you can't email it. It's too large to be sent as an email attachment. Oh man, it's saving it to the cloud location. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, um, you know, we'll save something for your subscribers. It tees them a little yeah. bit. <laughs> you know, no sense in giving away all your hard work here on the show um so that works out but can, can i just make one note here and then let you comment on it as we wrap up dave you know if you look right here i'll never forget how frustrated people were as gold you'll recall was hitting 850 950 1050 11 12 13 14 david yeah. there's another story here i mean there, there's an yeah. i think your 9x um may be even conservative if we factor in the global money supply what about oh, yeah. the fact yeah what about the fact since 1980 um david well if we do a 1980 let's just go over that real briefly if we do a yeah. 1980 and we'll do round numbers so we know mm -hmm. to cover the base money supply in the united states that we need twenty thousand dollar gold as ridiculous as that may sound and if it went to 1980 and did over double what it required to go on a gold standard. It went from, it needed 400, it got to 850. You have to take that 20,000 and double it and add a little bit. 
they got to be like 40,000 or 40. But then we haven't even factored in this uh, the fact that the global population has doubled exactly. at least. Yeah. And, and so that now we've got twice as many people who'll be desperate to shield themselves against inflation. Yeah. So I mean this thing literally could be unobtainium, unobtainium as John Rubino refers yeah. to it. Yeah. Wow. Mike Maloney as well. Yeah, there's it could. I've been asked about silver. I think silver has a greater chance of being unobtaining than gold only because uh, it's so undervalued. I mean, as Ted Butler said, and, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if Ted wrote it or Jim Cook, but um, you get too much for your money. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. sort of funny, but kind of, it's basically true. I mean, it's so undervalued. And so the problem is uh, for gold is once it gets into the whatever, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, whatever, that's unobtaining and not so much as it's just the average person just can't afford it. Well, but, but here's so another, are you, I've bucks. got, a, I've got something I got to add to you here. Yeah. Um, you know, Bitcoin, David, this is an interesting parallel. Uh, the, right. the, fun, the funny thing about Bit, Bitcoin is because you go out, what is it? 16 decimals, 30 decimals. I mean, it just goes out almost, seemingly to infinity. So you can buy what's called a Satoshi, which is like a right. one, one million. Yeah. Okay. But you can't do that with gold. I mean, at some point, I, I, I'm seeing it being sold now. Try not to laugh at one one hundred one one hundredth of a gram. At some point, yeah. you, so so I think that's a fantastic case for how unobtainable gold could be, and how silver could, um, you might say, fulfill the role, the the previous role of gold as as something yeah. tangible that um, one of seven or eight billion souls on earth is just trying to, you know, avoid runaway prices. I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I can't buy things fast enough already. And we're not even in hyperinflation yet because the next time I head to the store, it's, you know, 20, 30% higher in a lot of cases. I mean, I, I don't know, uh, David, I think we're seeing the end game that we've all been, anticipating for like two decades i, yeah. I think it's start, it's starting am i wrong is it no, not actually right and you make a very good point i mean the load project which i am definitely affiliated with uh we sell gold by the gram and silver or gold. wow so how do you buy gold you're making two two bucks a day right you right by the grain that's how so you know this doesn't leave anyone out these asset-backed digital currencies that are backed by physical metal you can buy it at that you know you buy your 12 cents worth you know what i'm saying which is I, impossible with the main dealer and i'm not saying that's the best way to do it but at least it offers protection whereas if you're in your currency you're you're done i mean it, it you know hyperinflates away you basically lost your life savings not you had anything to save you're living hand to mouth but you get my point you made it i'm just reaffirming your point and uh, that's the beauty i think of having that as a tool in your toolkit, I do not advocate people put all their money in an asset-backed digital currency. I certainly do. But having that available <clears throat> is really nice because it's peer-to-peer. -peer and, uh, you know, I can accept my subscriptions in AGX or AUX or whatever. Um, you know, I accept as far as a digital currency is concerned. So there's a lot in our future. And we have actually some pretty good weapons to... Um, Let's say throw a wrench into the gears of the powers that be. Exactly. And the only parting thought I'd like to, and forgive me for being, you know, a 20 year technician at heart. I mean, it's just what I, you know, I love the fundamentals. They make a great narrative, but you know, to me, price is just, it's definitive. You know, look at, if we look at this monthly, we've had maybe six closes below the exponential moving average in four years. This thing, this thing has more potential energy. I'm telling you than a, I don't know, cumulonimbus thunderhead headed this way. I mean, this thing is a lightning bolt. Am I wrong? Ready to strike. Wow. That yeah. is a power. Well, I remember there was a really, I only met him once. It was very early on in the speaking circuit. So I had to say like, 
you know, 2001, two, three, somewhere in that range. Can't even remember his name. He came from the LBMA. He was a silver trader. And he threw up a bunch of charts. He didn't throw up a whole lot, but this one he showed, I got a 20-year chart of silver. And I had just started running triathlons at the time. I think it was my first year. And he showed how flat silver had been for like 20 years around the $5 level. <clears throat> and it's not on your chart here. It goes back to like, oh, yeah. Anyway, but what it showed was this base because the bigger the base, the longer the move, right? And of course, that's true. You had a huge base between, you know, 80 and 2000, basically. And then, of course, the move went to 50, but it's not over. We need the third leg up on Elliott parlance. We have a, we probably just started it in gold. So, where does gold go? Well, <clears throat> if it went to 2000 on the second wave it usually does about a triple of what it did on on the second wave so the second wave went from i forget a thousand to two thousand i don't remember but <clears throat> so it will do a three thousand move so it'll go from two thousand to five thousand in that case those are rules of thumb no guarantee oh, david you said well listen to what i said i said i don't know what i did say is it usually is a triple so <clears throat> there you there you go um hey. silver you know, it went up uh, from 2009 bottom of about nine bucks to 50. That was a fivefold. So if you take that by three, you get 15. So if you take the 12 and you multiply it by 15, what do you get? 150 and um, you get pretty close. 180. To yeah. Yep. Exactly. No, that's that's really something. I mean, if you think of just how high this could be headed 180 and and of course we're going to take it one level at a time right we're going to we have to get through oh yeah 30. i mean like i said what i i mean i'm a practical guy and you know <clears throat> like i said we're going to edge out i mean my members will be with me and i'll tell them what i'm doing and they can do it or not do it but the last thing you want to do is see a spike high and then see a crash and not take some profits on the way up because you could get a 200 print just like you got a 5250 print in the uh, futures market in 1980, and then you know, silver Thursday three months later, it's down at 1025. You don't want to be holding your life savings in silver at that point. You want to have, to have taken some profit, even if it's fiat. And if it's fiat, and you're worried about currency destruction, then trade it. You know, buy land, buy cars, buy a business. You know, <clears throat> buy fur coats, buy straw hats in the wind. <laughs> I don't care. But you know, my, you, you get my. Yeah, I know. It's a very well-made deck. Gosh, David, I mean, we could sit here, couldn't we, all day and pontificate yeah. on how exciting a time this is. And and I hope that by adding a little bit of a visual, although it's just 2D, right, two-dimensional uh, chat here, but people can see just why we two old-school silver buffs, um, you know, and I'm an early student of the silver investor, Okay, I mean, why, you know, your protege is so excited because I haven't seen anything like this in at least 14, 15 years. So, I mean, if this thing is not over 50 or at least at $50 in the next year, I might just have to close up shop. That's, <laughs> that's how convinced I am. I might have to look to a different market. You know, and it, which would just break my heart. All right, David, I should stop. I'm getting silly here. But um, tell us all about all the gr fun stuff you're doing. Well, I, <clears throat> if you want to get on the free report or free newsletter, just go to themorganreport.com and sign up. If you're interested in the paid work, just go to the subscribe tab and read about it. Listen to the video. I'm making a documentary called uh, silversunrise.tv. If you go to that URL, silversunrise.tv, you can watch the most recent two trailers. There's been actually four made. Um, we had two and they've been updated. We're working on uh, our next uh, interview. Uh, we do need donations to uh, finish out the project. And as we make progress, I'm sure we'll get more and more donations. So that's it. Um, still having fun, still passionate about the markets and still uh, want a bunch of solutions for everybody. Uh, and there are, there are solutions. So we just, I want to see personally that people have a choice and they're not controlled by the money paradigm with the money powers that we the people have the ability to basically make our own lives through a different monetary sphere 
and crypto is part of that, <clears throat> but I don't think it's the total solution. I think there are other other options available. I think it's really well said. And you know, you mentioned uh, triathlon. I want to encourage you to try a, a what is it? A tri sprint this summer. We like to tr- we do those from time to time uh, near the house in the summertime, and I think it's a good way, you know, to, to stay in you know it, top physical condition without maybe overdoing it because a triathlon that's a, that's an investment in health yeah. right oh I, I quit in my 50s i'm over 70 now so those oh. days are behind me on those long distance i never did iron man just for the record only when i never did iron man no i did uh olympic distance is the best i did which is about a one-third iron but when you're pushing towards 60 that's that's most people couldn't do it believe me <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, I, I don't, I couldn't, I'm 54 and I, there's no way I could, I'm in that type of shape. I'm, I just try to do five K's, you know, yeah. maybe once or twice a week at which to you would back then you'd be like, Oh, five K 3.1 miles. <laughs> you know, when are you going to really work out? Um, but you know, I, I think it's important because I, I still have young kids in the yeah. home, right? Yeah. So they keep me on my feet right? They expect so much. I know you remember those years. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but listen, David, we appreciate you. And uh, gosh, this is the most, it, it tell me, it, it's just the most exciting time. So I need to calm down and uh, uh, get this thing posted. But we want to thank you. Glad that you're doing much better. And, uh, you know, we'll keep you in our prayers and can't wait to see more from the Silver Investor. Well, thank you. All right. Uh, All right. Talk soon, my friend. All right. (laughs) Bye-bye.